Hey guys, you might have heard of the Fetch API command. It's a web API standard available on all the browser and its main purpose is to make HTTP requests, right? So whether this is to pull a text HTML or to pull JSON from a service or to download a media like a video or to make a request to like do a post and like write to a database somewhere, right? You can use the Fitch API to do that. And we made a video about the Fitch API. I'm gonna reference it here if you are interested to do that. But here's the problem with the Fitch API, like some limitation that has been recently fixed with this. When you make a request, sometimes you want that request to stop. You wanna cancel that request. You wanna abort that request. Okay, and uh, example, it's very simple, right? I'm, I'm downloading a huge video and I want to cancel that request. That's an example in Mozilla, actually. And the other example is I'm making a request, a fetch a command, but I want to time out. I want my function to time out after five seconds, right? Because if it's taking more than five seconds, probably something is wrong with the server. So I'm going to cancel my request. So here's the thing. We can use what was called the abort controller to do that, right? You can send a signal with the Fitch API with an abort controller and then trigger an abort, right? Essentially, that will cancel the Fitch API. But here's the thing. Take this with a grain of salt. What happens here when we cancel an, a command, a cancel of Fitch, that only gives up in the client. This is a client cancel. It does not cancel the request on the server. The server is still processing that thing. So that's, that is very important to understand. So let's go ahead and, and build this thing. So I have a service running. I'm going to reference it uh, in the GitHub repo below. And that's essentially an endpoint that I built. It's called is prime. And it, it does exactly what it does, right? It tells you if a, a number is prime or not. So what you give it is like essentially you tell it, hey, is seven a prime and it will tell you returning a JSON that this is actually a prime or not. So since it's returning a JSON, you do that, I'll get your result. So it deserializes the JSON from the body. And then what it does is essentially is just do R, right? Dot, uh, let's just print that thing, okay? And then in case of an error, I want to take that error and just print it, all right? Prints.log e dot message, okay? And when you make that request, essentially what will happen is you're going to get a promise back. And after that promise is fulfilled, that means the service give you back the result. We're going to pick that as and what that took almost nothing because it's so fast. Seven is obviously a prime, right? We know that. But here's the thing. What happened if I give it an actual prime number that, that my service is going to take a long time processing it? And guess what? It's just churning and churning and churning and churning. After five seconds, I think it's going to say, oop, yup, it took me five seconds. This is actually a prime, all right? So here's the thing. What I want to do here, here is I'm going to declare a control, an abort control, and send it with the Fitch API so that I can cancel and send a signal to the Fitch API and say, hey, by the way, please give up. Right, because now I don't want you to wait any longer, right? So how do we do that? So what we do is essentially do const controller equal new abort controller. And then what you do is essentially just send that command with the second parameter, right? And the second parameter takes a lot of stuff, like what's the method, what headers, and all that stuff, right? And one of those is just JSON object. And one of those JSON objects is actually called the signal. And you can send the signal which is the controller.signal. You might see some fancy uh, uh, syntax that sends just the signal object. That's just the same thing, but I prefer things to be readable. I don't look at that. I look at that and see this is that destruction assignment is so unreadable. I don't like it at all, right? What it happens here is just this is what you send a signal, the controller signal, and you say, okay, make a request. Obviously, this is not going to do anything because you did not abort that signal you didn't send a signal that aborts thing so how do you do that okay it's very simple you send you make a request and you immediately you do controller dot signal dot abort and that immediately see that controller has been aborted that's kind of boring so this is like on demand abort so imagine you press the button and then you call the control the abort and that request will be aborted so we'll never get the results back because we just canceled that request right again Request still processing on my service. 
but we just gives up in the client. So this is called a timeout or abortable fetch. Another thing, let's do a timeout thing. How do we do a timeout? So it's very simple. So we're gonna function called is prime. Actually, I wrote it here, so it's just let's use it. So what happens here is just you do a timeout, right? You give it a variable, or and then you say it's like tie thousand and then controller, and then I want to set a timeout to call the abort function after the timeout time. So this is two, 2,000 milliseconds, that's two seconds, right? So I want this to give up after two seconds. So how do we do that, right? So if I do that, this is a function now, it's called is prime. So if I do is prime and I give it this puppy, and let's say I'm gonna time out after one second, one second passed and we gave up, right? How about after seven seconds? And you can see that is like one. Uh, we got the results before the timeout. So that's pretty cool, guys, right? All right, guys, uh, that was it for me. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, give, give it a like if you like this video and check out the other content of this channel. So see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.